Okay, let's look at question 53. Mr. Smith's weekly salary was increased from $210 to $280. Okay, good. His assistant salary was increased in the same proportion. Alright, so Mr. Smith, he went from 210 from 210 up to 280. His assistant salary was increased in the same proportion. If his assistant salary is now 200, so assistant salary is now 200, then the salary assistant salary before what in the increase was. All right, we don't know what it was before when before it went up to 200. Let's say it's x. They say it's in the same proportion. What that means is that Mr. Smith's salary before divided by what it is now is equal to his assistant salary before divided by what it is now. Alright? Or you could say also say his assistant salary now over what it was before is equal to his ass I mean Mr. Smith's salary now over what it was before is equal to his assistant salary now over what it was before. So you could put 210 over 280 is equal to x over 200. Or you could use 280 over 210 is equal to 200 over x. Alright, I'm going to say 210 over 280 is equal to the before over, n over the new, which is x which is before over the new salary 200 and then we find out what x is equal to all right we want to find x now let's look at this in the meantime his assistant salary was lower before it increased to 200 so it can't be 270 this is way out ridiculous it has to be less than 200 but what was it well 130 140 150 those are kind of close kind of too close to make a judgment quickly about them so let's continue the maths now if you multiply both sides by 200 you get x is equal to 200 would cancel itself here and you would have 210 over 280 by 200 all right that's what x would be let's see if we can do some simplifying 10 cancel 10 to 10 into 200 is 21 10 into 2 280 is 28 could simplify more 7 7 into 21 is 3 7 into 28 is 4 so this amounts to 3 over 4 by 200. We're just using this space here, up here. Remember, we don't have a lot of space working with, so we're all over the place here, but make sure you follow what's going on. Alright, this is x. Ah, 4 into 4 goes 1, 4 into 200, 4 into 25, and 0, 3, 5, 15. So x is 150. That's what I got here. Question 53. Let's see what happens. Question 53 is C. Right. Question 53 is C. So that's what this is saying. All right. Now let's move on to 54. Question 54. 54 and 55 re refer to the pie chart which shows the choices of 180 boys for their favorite games. 54 says, how many boys preferred football? All right, let's look at this. How many boys preferred football? How many boys were there in total? 
there were 180 boys. How many of them prefer football? Let's see. Remember, you have 360 degrees total. 90 degrees would represent quarter of the 360. So 100 degrees would be more than a quarter. So a, exactly a quarter of 180 would be what? 4 into 18 goes 4 times and 2, 4 into 20, 5, 45. This should be more than 45. Alright? So, <coughs> what you have here, it seems 50 is the answer. But if you should work the maths directly, what you would say is 100 over 360 multiplied by the 180 boys would give you the exact answer that you're looking for. If you cancel down and say... 2 into 10, 5, 2 into 36, 18, 18 into 18, 1, 18 into 1, 8 is 10, 5, 10 is 50, see it's a little bit more than 45, so 50 as we saw before, 50, this gives the exact value of 50, anyway our estimate, our, our argument before, showed it to have has to be more than 45 so the only valid choice is 50 so question 54 should be a 54 is a right now let's look at what 55 says if a boy is chosen at random the probability that he likes tennis is a boy is chosen at random what's the probability that he likes tennis now, table tennis represents 60 degrees. So, 60, the probability would be the same proportion as when you compare with the when you compare the angles, 60 over 360. Right? It would be the same 60 over 360. So, in this case. It would be one six because you know that when you cancel six into six one time six into thirty six six so fifty five would be D so question fifty five is D all right now that's dealing with statistics and probability let's look at fifty six what did you get for 56? Remember, you should have done all these questions already before looking at these videos, right? What did you get for 56? Let's see what this is about. The rate percent at which $1,200 is invested at to gain 72% in simple interest in three years is... Uh, Alright, the simple interest formula, you remember that is PTR over 100, principal times rate times time, same as PRT, if you remember it that way, over 100, alright? And then you could transpose that. So it's principal, you invest 1,200 times a certain rate in percent. So, the rate would be R over 100 times the time, one year, that's one of them, two years, you multiply by two, three years, you multiply by three, and so on. In three years, the time is three. So, 1,200 times the rate percent times three is equal to 72. What's the rate? Let's see. First of all, three years if you should 
invest this it seemed like a small amount very small certainly it's not 18 right certainly not 18 just before we do the maths we're looking if we could get an idea what it would be if it was 10 percent each year you would be getting one hundred and twenty dollars and after three years three hundred and sixty dollars so it's a lot less than ten percent you only get seventy two dollars it can't be nine and a half that's too close to ten it can't be eighteen all right so it's much smaller so you have a better chance of getting what the answer is if time was running out and you had to guess you wouldn't have to be worrying about guessing C and D. It would be either A or B. But let's do the math and see what happened. You have 100 into 100 goes 1. 100 into 1200 is 12. 12 trees is 36. So 36 times R is equal to 72. Divided by, 30, divided by 36. Divided by 36. Alright. What's 72 over 36? is 2 All right so 56 supposed to be B so question 56 B All right question 56 is B all right no what we'll do let's look at question 57 and see what that is question 57 uh, question 57 mm. what's going on all right let's erase all of these things and do question 57 a transformation maps the point 0, 1 onto the point 3, negative 1. This transformation is a... Alright, let's look at a rough graph of what we might have. 0, 1. So 0, 1 is this point. Then it goes to 3, negative 1. 1, 2, 3, and negative 1. So x comes down here. x was at 0, 1. x was the here before. Then it reaches here. How could it have reached here? Let's see. Rotation of 180 degrees. About 2, 0. About this. Could that have been the reflection into the point two zero? All right. First of all, let's see. If it's a rotation of one eighty degrees, about two zero. The distance from zero to two here it would be should be the distance if it rotates here. It should be the distance from 2 out here. So, 1, 2 on the left. It should be under 4, not 3. So, it's not A. Alright? Now, the thing is, I have an idea what it is. But let's look at each. A reflection into the point 2, 0. If it's reflected through the point 2, 0... Then that means it would, should end up somewhere here. Again, this distance from 0 to 2 should be the same as this distance from 2 out here. So it should be under 4. There is not B. A glide reflection in the line y equals 0. y equals 0 is the x-axis. Uh, let's see. If it glides over 3 and then is reflected, that's a possibility translation of the line 3 negative 1 
let's see if you have 0 1 and you do a translation it means you're adding to 3 negative 1 so when you add these 0 plus 3 is 3 1 plus negative 1 is 0 so here D would be out so it's seen as if it is C so 57 should be C right 57 is C how C really works is that you could glide the X this direction and put it over 3 when it's reflected over this X axis then this distance above is the same distance below it appears over 3 before and exactly under 3 and it's the same height the height from 3 up is the same depth from 3 down so it would be C alright alright let's break at this point and then we continue with the other questions later on